why do we sleep on a sleeping pad when we're camping? And how can you stay warm when you're sleeping outside this winter? Barefoot behavior, real tips for real people. What does that even mean? Welcome to Barefoot Behavior, where all your outdoor dreams come true. Get out of here. Get out of here. How to stay warm on a budget and guarantee a solid night's rest. Today we're going to talk about how to set up your sleep system to stay warm, comfortable, and recharged. I get a lot of questions on this. A lot of people think that they need to warm up their tent in order to be warm at night or that they need to bring an external heat source into their tent to keep their tent warm. This is not true. And unfortunately, I've heard this a lot. Your body is the true source of heat for warmth overnight. You may think heating up your tent is similar to like heating up your house and that you would want to keep your tent at a comfortable temperature. The reality is your tent is just a thin sheet protecting you from the outdoors. It's not a thick wall with insulation um, and it's really not gonna hold heat well. The point is, to make sure that you and your sleeping system is warm and insulated, not your tent insulated from the exterior. Now, I will do a video on three and four season tents, but this is still gonna ring true. Your tent is not meant to be at a comfortable living temperature when you're in the freezing cold. Now, before you even get into bed, you're gonna need to remember this. Stoke your internal fire. Eat something before you go to bed. I like to grab a Snickers bar. Ideally, you're gonna want something with simple sugars for fast acting and accessible carbohydrates, long chain carbohydrates, which would be legumes or the peanuts in a Snickers bar. And then you're gonna want something with fat that will continue to burn throughout the night. This is very similar to a campfire that you would make in the outdoors where you have tinder, sticks, and logs. So something that starts up and burns really quick something that's going to catch the bigger logs on fire, and then lastly, the logs that are gonna burn throughout the entire night. It's called kindling. What did I call it? Sticks. <laughs> Sticks. <laughs> Combine this with a few jumping jacks or push-ups, and you are gonna be off to a great start in staying warm overnight. You just wanna work up a heat. You don't necessarily wanna work up a sweat. All right the sleep gear. You're gonna need the appropriate gear and insulation to stay warm. If you're winter camping, chances are the temperature is at freezing or below freezing. Now, once that temperature dips below freezing for an extended period of time, the ground is actually going to freeze. The moisture that is found in soil, sediment, and the pores of rocks freezes and turns to ice. So you are sleeping on a solid block of ice. First off, let's talk about sleeping pads. You're gonna want two of them, and I'll explain why. It's not just about comfort and the sponginess or the, the mattressy feel of your sleeping pad. It's truly about insulation and keeping you warm. When you're sleeping on the frozen ground, you're going to lose the most amount of your heat to the frozen ground. So it's incredibly important to make sure that you are insulated from the frozen ground. So here's the key. You want to be off the ground with your air pad. The air mattress goes directly on the ground. And then on top of that, you have your foam sleeping pad with the heat reflector facing up. This is going to be the gray or silver side. And then on top of that, it's you inside of your sleeping bag. So we don't do this the other way because if you were to put the eggshell on the ground and then the air pad directly underneath your sleeping bag, you're actually going to be using a lot of energy to heat that air layer between you and the eggshell. You want to retain as much heat as you possibly can. You don't have to heat that layer of air, then don't do it. In the winter, it's okay to be selfish with your heat. You want to keep as much as you can for you, and you want to reduce the amount of time that it takes for any of your heat to escape and permeate from your body. So I call it an eggshell sleeping pad, but this is just any generic 
foam sleeping pad that you see. It folds up kind of like an accordion style uh, foam sleeping pad. They're usually really thin. These will generally have an R value anywhere from one to two. This is the layer that you want directly underneath you and your sleeping bag, and then you want the air mattress underneath that foam sleeping pad. R value, it's delta temp divided by heat flux. Thanks to Scott, who is an expert materials engineer at Boeing, we have a little bit of an in-depth dive of the thermodynamics of heat loss and why R value is important when you're camping in the winter. Now we're not gonna get into the nitty gritty details, but what you need to know is that the more insulation you have between you and the ground, the longer it's gonna take for your heat to travel into the cold ground, which means you're retaining more of your body heat for longer. The higher R value, the slower heat is going to be able to pass through to a cold material on the other side. So if you have double the thickness of an insulator, it's gonna take twice as long for your heat to travel through it. So thanks to the second law of thermodynamics, we know that energy is always gonna move from hot to cold. So you, a warm body, sleeping on a cold, frozen ground, your body heat is naturally gonna wanna be absorbed into the cold ground. Now, since there's no realistic possibility that you are gonna heat the ground below you, you're just gonna continuously lose your heat throughout the night. And so if you have no insulation and you are sleeping directly on the cold ground, you can kiss your heat goodbye and you are gonna be cold all night. Now, what's really important is that you have the appropriate amount of insulation between you and the ground, and this is where we get into the R value. In the summertime, you might get away with sleeping on the ground. And at that point, this is really a comfort question. You might go with just a foam pad with an R value of one and still obviously be warm. And if that's comfortable for you, go for it. As you start to get into the fall, you may want an R value between two to three or one to three. And in the winter, try to get to that five plus, especially in these sub-zero temperatures, so that you can reduce the amount of heat that you are losing to the ground overnight. Now, keep in mind that there's no hard and fast rule when it comes to R value and temperature. These are just guidelines. Some people are going to run a little bit hotter. Some people are going to run a little bit colder. And it's important just to find something that works for you. This doesn't mean the higher the better. One of the things that you're going to have to remember is that the higher R value, you're likely going to take a weight and size penalty in your pack. So don't just jump for a queen size blow up air mattress, because obviously none of us are gonna carry that backpacking, even though your R value is gonna be double digits, you wanna find the right balance of something that is light, but also thick enough to keep you insulated and warm from the ground. All right, so now we understand why the insulation from the ground is so important. Next, we're gonna talk about your sleeping bag and what temperature rated sleeping bag you need in order to be comfortable. Now get this, sleeping bags are not rated for comfort. This is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. They say, hey, it's 20 degrees outside. I'll get a 20 degree sleeping bag. No, you're gonna be cold. This sleeping bag is rated 20 and that is a survival rating, not a comfort rating. So generally when I'm camping outdoors and I know that it's gonna be 20 degrees outside at night, I tend to go for about a zero degree sleeping bag because I know that's more likely to keep me comfortable. And this coupled with the appropriate layering on my sleeping pads, ooh, I am sleeping just fine. If your sleeping bag is a little bit older, it might not actually be rated to what the label says. And the reason for this is that the fill or the, the down and material can start to get compressed, it can start to clump a little bit. And so just know this if you're using some of your gear that's a little bit older, and I know, and I'm the same way, I have some old gear that I would never leave the house without, that I would trust on any trip. And so if you have old gear that works for you, that's warm and you trust it, that's good. But if you happen to be buying something secondhand, um, just know that if you're reading the rating and this is a 10-year-old bag or a 15-year-old bag, that you maybe want to take a little bit of uh, 
you know, cushion on what that tag says, just given the, the age of the gear. Let's talk about inside your sleeping bag. Okay, so you're insulated from the ground appropriately. You have the appropriate temperature rated sleeping bag. So what are you gonna do inside your bag? Here's a couple things that really help keep you warm. One, we like to use a sleeping bag liner. This is essentially just a thin material that you wear, uh, like a pretty much like a sheet cocoon around you when you're inside your sleeping bag. And this is gonna bump up the, the temperature rating of your sleeping bag by up to 25 degrees. Now I know a lot of us don't have multiple sleeping bag options for different temperatures. And so this can be something that can increase the range of your camping ability throughout the winter. One other tip, similar to the liner that we have tried is we got a really light summer sleeping bag. It's rated to about 55 degrees. And, and instead of a liner, you could always do that. And, and then you have this 55 degree rated sleeping bag that's really light. You wear that inside of your winter rated bag and you will definitely be toasty. So the nice thing about this really lightweight summer bag and also the sleeping bag liner, they pack down to about the size of a soda can. Now, for me, that's an easy no-brainer. I'm throwing that in my pack no matter what. Even if I don't use it, I have it just in case. Because I don't know about you, but I hate being cold when I'm sleeping outside. Now, inside of your liner or inside of your lightweight sleeping bag, some people like to wear base layers. If you've seen our other video on layering, you know that we like to have a pair of fresh, dry, clean clothes, a base layer that we wear to sleep at night. Some people swear that they like to go nude. This is also an option, um, but just do something that works for you on this one. There's no hard and fast rule, but the key, no matter what you do, is be dry. You are not gonna be warm if you are wet or damp inside of your sleeping bag. And then the last thing for sleeping inside of your bag is feel free to throw a hat on. Oftentimes, if we're not in a mummy bag, or even if we are, some of our head is exposed. And so, because our tent is not heated or warm, you're gonna maybe wanna throw a hat on just to make sure that you, you keep your head warm. Speaking of being dry, there are some things that you can do if you do have wet clothes. So let's say that your clothes are wet or damp and you need to wear them the next day. Here's a tip. Take those clothes, stick them inside your sleeping bag between the liner and the bag, and just keep those kind of right at your core while you're sleeping. And your heat that is permeating out from the bag is gonna dry your damp clothes. Now, obviously, don't stack a bunch of sopping wet clothes on top of you, wring them out, make sure they're as dry as they can be, but then take those damp clothes, stick them between your liner and your bag overnight, and those are gonna dry out for you. As a general rule of thumb when you're camping in the winter, anything that you want to have dry and warm for the next day needs to be inside of your sleeping bag. If you think that hanging clothes or items inside of your tent overnight is gonna dry them out, think again. The breath from your, your breathing is going to create moisture inside of your tent and everything that's hanging is going to be damp or wet. And this is really, really frustrating to wake up to. It's happened to me multiple times. I've had to learn the hard way. So do yourself a favor and don't learn the hard way. One mistake that's really easy to make is to think that breathing your breath, your warm air into your sleeping bag is going to heat it up and keep you warmer. Don't do this. All you're gonna do is breathe moisture into your bag and you're gonna make yourself wet and cold. So the last thing that you need to do when you're sleeping is make sure that your mouth is breathing or expelling your breath out into the tent and not into your sleeping bag. This is a mistake that all of us make, especially for kids. Kids generally think, hey, warm air, I'm gonna breathe it into my bag and, and heat myself up. Make sure that this isn't happening. It's just a recipe for cold, bad sleep. If you are doing all of these methods and you're still cold, or you happen to have a night that is unusually frigid, 
One thing that you can do is you can take boiling water, you can fill up a Nalgene or two, and you can tuck those into your sleeping bag with you. I generally like to put one by my feet because for me, my feet tend to get cold a little bit more quickly. And then I also like to keep another one by my core or between my legs. And this is gonna keep you toasty and warm for hours. And on the plus side, you're gonna wake up and you're gonna have fresh drinking water because you've already boiled it, you've already sanitized it, and you're not gonna wake up to a frozen Nalgene of water because again, that is another frustrating mistake to make is to have water ready to go for the next day only to wake up and find that it's frozen. So ultimately, there's a lot of ways that you can sleep out in the cold in the winter, outdoors. Generally, when we're camping out in the winter, we're camping in a tent and we're backpacking, so we wanna be able to carry everything on our backs. These are the methods that 100% trail tested have worked for us and when we are camping in the winter time, we're never concerned about being cold overnight. Winter is absolutely one of the most beautiful times to be camping. People aren't getting outside in the cold and it's usually because, you know, you're worried about the elements, you're worried about being cold, um, but you don't have to be. You can follow some of these tips and you can continue to get outside year round. What we really wanna make sure is that you feel comfortable and you feel confident getting outside year round, no matter what the conditions are. Hey, so the best thing that you can do to support this channel, like, subscribe, we'll do our best to bring you a new video each week. Check out some of our other videos, and as always, check out the gear list below. Keep getting outside, stay wild, and enjoy the outdoors. This has been Barefoot Behavior. People say, hey, close that window, you're letting the cold in. That's not actually true. You are always letting the heat out. It's science.